So how do we do this from start to finish to determine the delta S of the universe for a particular reaction? To determine if a reaction is going to be spontaneous, thermodynamically favorable, or not. So this one is asking us if we were to take some liquid, uh, we're trying to make some liquid methanol by reacting carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas. So we're going from three moles worth of gaseous reactant to one moles worth of liquid product. And so our structure is becoming more ordered in that reaction. But what we need to keep in mind is if it's thermodynamically favorable, it's not just about the reaction. It's about the reaction and the surroundings. And if we look at all the pieces of that puzzle and think about the entropy of the universe, if that number ends up being positive, if it causes a net disorder in the universe, then the reaction is going to be thermodynamically favorable. So be careful with the, uh, if it's asking about um, the delta S of the reaction, or if you're thinking about it from the whole perspective of the universe, is it going to be thermodynamically favorable or not, spontaneous or not. Also keep in mind to be careful with states of matter in case they give you some extraneous information that you don't need. Uh, and be careful with your signage, positive, negative. So let's break this down. If Let's first find that delta S of the reaction. So if we're taking carbon monoxide, one mole of carbon monoxide gas, two moles worth of hydrogen gas turning into one mole's worth of liquid methanol, and we're going to find the entropy change in the reaction, we're going to do products minus reactants. So we have one mole's worth of that liquid methanol. We're going to grab the delta S liquid value. So that's where that 127.19 comes from. Uh, we don't care about the gaseous methanol, right? It's not in our reaction. We're going to subtract one mole's worth of carbon monoxide, that S value, and two moles worth of hydrogen gas. And we see that you get that delta S for the reaction is negative 331.88. That makes sense to have a negative S because we're going from three moles worth of gas to one moles worth of liquid. It's becoming much more ordered at, throughout the course of this reaction. So if it's more disorder, positive S. If it's more ordered, more structured, that's when you have a negative S. But if we want to know if it's thermodynamically favorable, that's if you have a positive S for the universe. So we also have to take into consideration the surroundings. And we learned on a previous slide to get the delta S of the surroundings, we do the delta H of the reaction, flip the sign on that, and divide it by the temperature. So that's where the delta H column of that data table is going to come from. So we use the delta H for liquid methanol, just one mole's worth. We're going to subtract out one mole's worth of carbon monoxide and two mole's worth of hydrogen. Remember that the delta H of any element in its natural state is going to be zero. All these numbers that you see in that data table there are heats of formation. Uh, heats of formation is where you're uh, making one mole of a compound from its elements in its natural state. And if hydrogen's an element, you can't have a delta H of formation of a compound. So the delta S of our surroundings, excuse me, the delta H of our reaction is negative 127.87 kilojoules. It's an exothermic reaction. It's giving off heat energy as those gases combine to form a liquid. That also makes sense, right? The reaction itself is cooling down if it's going from gas to liquid. Um, it gives off that heat energy. So remember that we said that we're going to flip the sign 
on the enthalpy of the reaction because if the reaction is giving off heat, that means that the surroundings are absorbing that heat energy. So the surroundings, if you absorb heat, we usually show that as a positive H, right? To turn that H into an entropy value, we're going to take that H value and divide it by the temperature. Well, all of those heat deformation numbers that we were using take place under standard conditions, 298 Kelvin. So we're going to divide that positive 127.87 kilojoules by 298 Kelvin, and then we see a positive 0.429 kilojoules per Kelvin is our entropy there. I'm going to switch those kilojoules per Kelvin into joules per Kelvin so that way we can be uh, compatible with our units here as you'll see in just a second. Because to get the delta S of the universe we have to get add together the delta S of the system, the reaction, and the surroundings of that reaction. So we found that the reaction itself was exothermic um, and that it was becoming more ordered, more structured as we went from gas down to liquid. So the reaction had a negative S value, but our surroundings had a positive S value. There's where I made that switch on the last slide from kilojoules to joules. That's so we could add those two numbers together. When we add those two numbers together, you see a net positive 97 joules per Kelvin. Because that S value is positive, the reaction is thermodynamically favorable. It's going to happen spontaneously all on its own. You might not think it would. Since you're going from three moles of gas to one mole of liquid, you're making something that's very structured out of something that was pretty chaotic and disorganized. However, it is going to be thermodynamically favorable in the end because the surroundings end up uh, becoming so much more disorganized as a result of that reaction taking place that it ends up being a win for the universe, more disorder overall, and so we can declare the reaction is going to be thermodynamically favorable.